Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And uh, many of you have requested me to make a video on how to stop fearing calamities and challenges and difficulties which come upon our life. You told me to find some Bhagavad Gita verse to deal with the on ongoing calamities today and from the last few weeks and hopefully or hopefully not in the future. So I I found out two very beautiful verses and these verses are also one of my favorite verses and uh, these verses are in the ninth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so this is 9.22 if you can see this is ninth chapter 22 okay do you see this this here this verse all right this verse is very crucial i don't know if you can see this here yeah down you can see all right so what is written here i will read it out but those who always worship me with exclusive devotion meditating on my transcendental form to them i carry what they lack and i preserve what they have okay so this is a very famous verse let us recite this verse ananyas chinta yanto maam ye jana paryupasate tesham nitya bhi yukta naam yoga chemam baham yaham all right let us read the purport once again but those who always worship me with exclusive devotion meditating on my transcendental form conditions apply <laughs> To them, I carry what they lack and I preserve what they have. Wow, this is a very, very, very beautiful verse. So, here Lord Krishna is uh, giving this assurance to Arjuna. As you know, uh, if you see this uh, photo here, for the Westerners who are not aware of what the Bhagavad Gita is, this is a conversation inside the Mahabharata, which is one of the greatest. Uh, scriptures of the Vedic tradition in the Vedic tradition and uh, this was spoken by Lord Krishna to Arjuna okay Arjuna is descendant of uh, he is the son of Pandu and Kunti Devi great personalities and Bharat Maharaj also so he is a great soul and Krishna uh, God is giving instructions to Arjuna because he is not able to fight this fratricidal war, but that was the need of the hour. And in this uh, in this beautiful epic, uh, this Bhagavad Gita is there. It's a part of the Mahabharata. So this this verse comes in the ninth chapter. So the ninth chapter is entitled as, if you can see here, the name of the ninth chapter is the I don't know if you can see this here, the most confidential knowledge. Okay. You can see this here. It's a very amazing verse. Okay, so here, what does Lord Krishna say? For those who always worship me with exclusive devotion, exclusive devotion, meditating on my transcendental form. All right. To them, I carry what they lack, and I preserve what they have. I'm reading this purport again and again. Uh, the translation, I mean. So therefore, now see what's the scene, the setting of the Gita is Arjuna is about to fight this war now. okay, And he emerges victorious, of course, by Krishna's grace and by his own power. But uh, there are many difficulties which Arjuna faces during the war. Especially the biggest challenge, uh, there are two, two, the, two of the greatest challenges which he faces during the war is uh, first, uh, Dronacharya, who is his uh, teacher, is this Dronacharya. He he was uh, he wanted to capture Yudhishthir Maharaj, who is his uh, Arjuna's elder brother, and therefore uh, Arjuna had to protect uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj always because Dronacharya is is a formidable warrior. No, there is nobody in the entire universe who can defeat him. All right, he is the he is the son of the great Rishi Bhavadwaj and he is also the disciple of Parshuram himself. Parshuram is one of the avatars of Lord Vishnu. He is a Shaktyavesh avatar which means he is, uh, he is a normal living entity like you and me but still not normal. He is not abnormal but he is super normal. <laughs> 
All right, so he is empowered by Lord Vishnu to do extraordinary activities. And um, Parshuram had personally taught uh, Dronacharya and Bhishma Pitama also. These two are very formidable warriors. And um, Dronacharya therefore uh, had uh, these disciples, Pandavas and Kauravas were his disciples only. And somehow they had to fight uh, this war because of the ego and envy and the stupidity and the greed of the Kauravas. All right? They are solely responsible for this conflict. And then he wanted to capture Yudhishthir Maharaj. And the problem was, except Arjuna, there was nobody in this entire world or even in the entire universe who could stop Dronacharya. Okay. It was not possible for Arjuna to defeat Dronacharya, although he had defeated him in Virat once, but it is not possible to defeat him literally. <laughs> So therefore, uh, the only thing Arjuna could do was he could stop Dronacharya from advancing towards Yudhishthir Maharaj. And all the army of the Pandavas, including uh, Yudhishthir, Bhim, uh, then Nakul and Sedev, and their uh, other friends like Saptiki, Bhuminjay, you know, and all these personalities also uh, included, um, except Arjuna, they combined but they could not stop Dronacharya, right? Because he is a formidable warrior. There is nobody who can challenge Drona. And Arjuna was the only one who could just, just check Drona, just stop him from not reaching to Yudhishthir. And that was a very big challenge because if Yudhishthir was killed, then that, that was not a very big problem because then Bhima would be uh, the next uh, king. I mean, Bhima would take the position of Yudhishthir. And if Bhima would be killed, then Arjuna would take the position and then Nakul said it, uh, respectively. But if Yudhishthir was captured, he would become a prisoner of war and then this, the entire war would stop because the king has been captured now. So now when the king is captured, the war is over. So this is a very big challenge which he faced. And um, Imagine the entire Kuru army is there backing Dronacharya, headed by Duryodhan, Shakuni, and Dushasan, Karna, and all these. So imagine the imagine the stress which Arjuna would have had. Uh, I mean, just imagine you are the only one who can stop this war from ending, which means uh, you are the only one who can stop the Pandavas from getting uh, from being defeated by Drona. Okay or Duryodhana, after all, ultimately. So imagine the level of stress Arjuna would have had. So therefore, uh, we also see that in our lives, there are many stressful situations. But if you try to think, uh, you will never feel that your stress, which you are having, is so bad in comparison to what Arjuna had. Okay, so this is one very big stress which he had. And the next, the biggest stress that he had uh, during this war was when Abhimanyu, his son, Abhimanyu is the son of Arjuna and Subhadra. Okay, Subhadra is Lord Krishna's sister. Subhadra and uh, Arjuna had this, uh, so Subhadra and Arjuna had this uh, son, very beautiful, very handsome, very powerful, very, he was an extraordinary personality, but he was the only one who knew to uh, break through the chakra view and enter. And then Arjuna was outside of, he was in the outskirts of the Kurukshetra battlefield. And he was fighting with another king there. All right, this was a trick which the Parvas had used to distance Arjuna from uh, the battlefield. And then they uh, invoked the chakra view, which is a specific kind of a uh, uh, formation of the military okay and except krishna arjuna and uh, abhimanyu there was nobody in the side of the pandavas who could uh, break through this and if you did not break through then the chakra view would consume the entire army of the enemy of course the pandavas in this case so therefore abhimanyu took the risk to go 
due to Jayadrat and his boon which he had got from Lord Shiva, he could prevent Yudhishthir Bhim Nakul Sadev from entering the uh, chakra view and this is how Abhimanyu went inside and then he never came back because Abhimanyu was so powerful that he fought individually with each and every uh, Maharathi who, uh, in the side of the Kauravas and he checked each one of them but unfortunately these Kauravas they are, these are the crooks of the highest order. These, these are criminals, murderers, rascals, thieves, thugs, and there are no adjectives which you can use for these criminals. And these crooks, seven Maharathis together, you know, headed by Duryodhana, uh, Shakuni, Dushasan, Karna, and all these crooks together, they went and murdered this 16-year-old child, uh, Abhimanyu. And then Arjuna was so angry after this that he took a vow that tomorrow either I will kill Jayadrath before sunset or I will submit myself to fire. So this was another major stress which he had. All right? And finally by Krishna's grace he did it. And there's another interesting verse which also assures us. Now how, how could Arjuna do this? Of course he was an extraordinary warrior. He's known as Savya Sachi, okay. But there's another verse uh, which, ex which uh, also gives us a lot of hope if you read the Bhagavad Gita. It is there in this uh, ninth chapter itself, all right. So I will show you this verse. It is the 31st verse. It is this verse, okay. The verse is Chipram Bhavati Dharmataha Sashwata Chintin Nigachati Kauntya Pratijanihi Name Bhaktya Prana Name Bhakta Pranashati. He quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace. O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. Alright, so this this verse also tells us that Lord Krishna is assuring that. Um, in fact, he is not assuring. He is telling to Arjuna, O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. Now, uh, the Acharyas explain why, why Krishna does not say it himself. Krishna could have said, you know, my devotee never perishes. But Krishna doesn't do that. He says, Kontya Patijani means, you declare bold, boldly that my devotee never perishes. Why does he do that? Uh, if you read the commentaries of the Acharyas, uh, you will get this explanation. So Acharyas explain that Krishna may break his promise. I mean, he would never, but let's assume he may break his promise. But if his devotee makes a promise, Krishna will never, never, never break it. So therefore, Krishna, Krishna knows that if my devotee has said something, then I will fulfill it. So therefore, he tells to Arjuna that you declare that my devotee never perishes. And this similar thing we can see multiple times uh, when uh, uh, this great personality, Pralad Maharaj, was being tormented by Hiranyakashipu, his father. All right. Then Lord Vishnu took the avatar of Nursing Dev, the most uh, ferocious avatar, <laughs> half man, half lion, and he ripped apart the intestines of Hiranyakashipu and he liberated him and he liberated Pralad Maharaj also of the difficulties. And we can also find these stories in the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's very crucial that we read the Srimad Bhagavatam just by seeing uh, videos in YouTube or seeing motivational videos. It, it won't help much. It can help you to a certain extent. but. Uh, you need to know that uh, how God had protected his great devotees. And also we have the example of Ambarish Maharaj who was protected by Lord Vishnu from Durvas Muni. All right, it's a beautiful story. I'll make a video on it someday. And there's so many examples. Gajendra Moksha stories there. Where Gajendra, he was an elephant actually. Yes, he was Indra Dumna Raja in his past life and in this life due to a curse he became an elephant and uh, he, he was under the clutches of a crocodile in the heavenly realms and then at the end he understood that 
he will not be able to fight with this crocodile. And then he surrendered to God. And then Lord Vishnu came sitting on Garuda and he chopped off this crocodile and he delivered both of them. <laughs> All right, so time is up for me. I have to rush. So therefore, uh, you must read these stories and the shlokas and these scriptural uh, principles. Only then you can be aware that there were great personalities who had seen such difficult times. You know, imagine your son being murdered brutally, mercilessly by seven crooks together on this earth. And there was then demons, their actions, all right? They had tried to insult Draupadi also and cheat the Pandavas by hook or by crook and get everything. But there was only one problem. What was that? Lord Krishna was there on the side of the Pandavas. And because Krishna was there at the end, they were victorious. And Yudhishthira Maharaj was coronated as the emperor of the world, all right? And... Therefore, when we know that God is in our side, that is why uh, in every video I say God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Oh, did I say this today? No, now I'm saying. <laughs> all right. So when we realize that, then we will know that we are not alone. So when we know that God is there on our side, then we won't fear these difficulties. All right. Now, this does not mean you stop doing anything and you just say, oh, actually, you know. God is there with me all the time. Why should I do anything? Why should I work? Why should I go to the office? Why should I you know, eat? God will satisfy my hunger. It's not like that. Although Arjuna was there, uh, I mean, although Krishna was there with Arjuna, but when Bhishma and Drona were shooting arrows, then Arjuna was also countering them. All right, He was fighting. Krishna did not tell him that, hey, dude, just chill. You know, I'm there. Don't worry. You know, I am. You know who I am, you know, I will take care of these people. No, he didn't say like he said, Arjuna, you must fight, you must defeat Vishma. Okay. And there was one instance where uh, Krishna was so angry with Arjuna that Arjuna, out of his love and affection for his uh, for Bhishma Pitama, was not fighting. And then Arjuna, Krishna became very angry and he said to Arjuna, You must fight. All right. And then one day, the ninth day of the Kurukshetra war, when Bhishma's prowess was unstoppable. Krishna realized that nobody can check him now. So he got down from his chariot and he took the wheel of the chariot, which was wheel of one chariot, which was lying uh, there. And he ran and he charged towards Bhishma. And seeing this Bhishma uh, surrendered, he put his weapons down. And when Bhishma Pitama passes away from this world, just before passing, he remembers this scene. He says, may this sight of you taking the, uh, taking the wheel of the chariot and running towards me, may this sight remain eternally in my consciousness. And by taking this sight in my consciousness, I want to depart from this world. And Bhishma Pitama, he is one of the 12 Mahajans. He is a great, very, very, very great personality. And then he also went back to the spiritual world. All right, And therefore, you have to read these scriptural truths and stories and shlokas and you have to understand the concepts. Only then you can get rid of fear. Otherwise, you will always be haunted today by some virus, today by some polit tomorrow by some politician, then the next day by some uh, criminal maybe. All right. So therefore, don't be haunted. Take the necessary steps which are required and also read these scriptural truths okay so if you have if you have not uh, got a copy of this bhagavad gita then you must do you can find the link in the description section all right and yes as usual if you want a consultation from me then you can please go down to my website also down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him if you are new then please subscribe to it below thank you very much